sisters. Uh, my name is Yoshihatsujira. I, for those who don't know me, I am, how old am I? 27? 27 years old. I'm originally from Los Angeles. Uh, oh, yeah, this is my family. I am the eldest of six, uh, six kids. My dad's Japanese. My mom's from Nicaragua. Um, yeah, I, I kind of grew up in a weird age where, like, I did there was no technology, and then suddenly video games started really popping up. And yeah, I, I played a lot of video games growing up, but never did I imagine I'd be here talking, making video games, let alone talk about video games in front of a Sunday service. So here we are. Um, yeah, so what I want to talk about today is EQ Studios, the team that I'm here up here representing. Um, EQ Studios is a team that was formed... Uh, it predates us making video games, but we are a team right now of eight. Many people have come and gone through, but we have our eight members. Uh, one, our lead programmer is in Japan currently. And uh, these are just some of the faces that you may see, you may recognize a few, you may not. Um, but yeah, we've been living in Las Vegas for, or at least I've been in Las Vegas for the last seven plus years. And yeah, I, today I want to be able to share kind of what we're up to and kind of also my story uh, through the studios and how that impacts the work that we do. Okay, so first of all, oh, I guess, yeah, the, the, the next thing I want to explain is like we, so our first game is called The Pains Creek Killings. It is a mystery investigation adventure game. Um, it's the first game we ever put out. Um, it is... Uh, it, is, it is a walking simulator. It is an experience of where people get to go to this abandoned town and kind of explore the... If you're really a fan of whodunit mysteries, this is really right up your alley. And uh, it took us five years in development to get this game from, like, planning stage all the way to the end production where we were able to put it on the store and on sales. So, yeah, this is a huge achievement for us, but, you know, this is also the work of my entire team over the course of the last five years. So, um, I, so, yeah, I'm up here talking about video games, but I guess the big question is um, game development. What is game development? I know that there might be some people here who may not know what game development is and, or even the process to go through it. So just going to go briefly just explain what video game development is. So the, you know, the definition of game development is <laughs> the process of making video games. So what exactly is that? So... Um, like um, video games, like any medium, has kind of like a starting phase where you kind of plan everything. You create the blueprints, you create the uh, the uh, the concept art. You you know you talk with your team, decide what kind of characters you want, what kind of setting you want. Um, all the uh, you know all the planning phase, and once you have your blueprints ready, then you're ready to go into production. So. Production is like you make all the necessary assets, like you create, you know, your 3D models. If you're making a 2D game, you create your sprites. You create all these individual assets that make up your world. And like music, um, you know, falls into that category. Um, you have also your your game asset art. Uh, sometimes you you know this guy's working on looks like uh, <laughs> some penguin art. For, uh, but yeah, and then once that's all done, you put them into a, a software called a game engine, where you have all your assets interact with each other, and you have a programmer, uh, someone who uh, allows all the all these assets to interact with each other. So when you press a button, what does that do? How does it interact with the world that you created? And then once that is done, then you're able to finally be able to test your game. And this is where kind of the monotonous process of testing your game over and over and over again. Because, you know, once it's out in the market, there's no way, to, uh, like back in the day, there was no way to change it. So you had to do testing over and over again. And, you know, you iron out all the bugs, make sure that there's no problems. Because, you know, once your game has a problem, you know, it's, it's, it's not really a good look for your studio. But, yeah, after you finally have a game that's able to be, you know, put out um, for sale. Um, yeah. And so wh whatever your game is, it could be like a simple challenge to get from like point A to point B. And, or you could, it could be a in narrative interactive experience where you're trying to tell a story of something. Or it could be even just a social interactive game where you want to just allow the players to you know, interact with each other. Regardless, 
video games is simply a medium in which we're able to give an experience to play that is more interactive, where they are in control of their actions. So, um, yeah, the next thing that I want to talk about is just like a small testimony on my part of how I got started with all this. So, um, I, so it's just some, something really short about me. I, I didn't go to college. I didn't learn, I know, I didn't go to college to learn about video game development. The only thing that I had going for me was just I loved animation. I had some sort of passion towards uh, creating small short stories when it comes, you know, and when I was a kid, I would just use my parents' computer and just make these tiny, like, stick animation. Uh, and that's kind of where it started. So around EQ Studios, before it became a game development company, was actually a freelancing, uh, freelancing company where they outsourced their work for other, you know, clients, other people who needed work, mainly in computer graphics. So they also started a small school, and they, the school ended up, you know, the school they, they wanted to have, like, maybe, uh, was a total of 10 kids? I could be wrong. 10 kids. Um, and basically every week we would have, like, some small classes session. So that's what I did. For two years, I did that. So it's equivalent to, like, you know, taking lessons for music. But in this case, it was Computer Graphics 101. I did that for two years when I was in high school. So that was 13 to maybe when I was 15. And that's pretty much the extent of my education when it comes to, you know, working with software. Um, yeah, so, and then after that period, I think I, you know, I, I finished high school, I went to GPA. Uh, after GPA, I was kind of lost, didn't really have a direction, and at that point, EQ Studios was in the transition of becoming a freelancing company to finally, they wanted to make their own IP, hence going to game development. So, and it was around this period, maybe it was like 2014, 2015, that I kind of was onboarded onto the team. And this is me, I think, in our very first studio working on the game. Uh, and this was eventually what would lead to Payne's Creek Killings. So um, I'm, I'm not, like, you know, for the sake of context, I'm not anyone special. <laughs> you know, I am, I'm not someone gifted with a lot of, of, a lot of you know, uh, I don't have like some hidden talent where I'm like really good at art. I just had this passion for wanting to tell stories. And from there, you know, I think like any other person, I always, you know, I always had one foot in, one foot out. So like I, when, when anyone, anything what anyone does, they always want to know what's in it for them, you know? What's in it for me? What, what am I gonna benefit from this? And I was no different. But the entire ride was very exciting for me. I like from here, I was able to, you know, uh, this, is, uh, this is a small little kind of old sketch of what the town looked like. And this is kind of like all the, uh, 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 kind of like all the details that we wanted to have in our little makeshift town. And I was so excited to work on this. I, I was like, this is the first time where I get to create my own world. And I, for the first time in experience, I mean, I can't imagine what, you know, what it was like for God to create the entire existence. But through this, I was, like, so excited. Like, all these small details, like, oh, my gosh, I can't wait for the players to interact with this. Oh, my God, this flower, I can't wait for people to look at it. Oh, my gosh, this trash can that's out there on the street. I was so excited. I was like, wow, this is, my, you know, the world that I'm helping build, I'm, that I'm creating, that, I'm, that eventually players are going to be able to experience later on. So, yeah, so this was my, uh, and then... Uh, then we started to work on the game engine. This is like our very first prototype, and then we have like what eventually it would look like. So yeah, this was kind of the process. I had a weird love-hate relationship with the entire process. I loved the work in it, but at the same time, I was very hesitant with, <laughs> with where my life was going because, you know, I, you know I, at this point, I think I might have been like 23 years old. You know, it, the production went on for, it was, it was supposed to be six months, eventually became one year, two years, three years. And, you know, I, I didn't know where, I didn't have any sight or any direction of where this was going. Um, as, you know, as someone who, who, who had no direction in life, I, you know, th I was content with doing this, but at the same time, I asked myself, what's the purpose of all this? Why am I here? Like, why am I pushing myself to do this every day? Why? So these are all questions I asked why I was still doing this, and it really became to a point where, like, I, like, I, as I said before, I had one foot in and one foot out. So I think, 
and I think every person, and this, is, this goes for anything, you know, this is not just specifically game development. When you have one foot in and one foot out, you always have this, you know, you know, you have this perspective. Oh, if things don't work out, then I could always just exit. That's why you keep one foot in, one foot out, right? You say to yourself, okay, if things don't go my way, I'm just going to hitchhike. I'm going to, you know, and it's the same thing with probably relationships as well. So, you know, if you, if, if you use the back door pretty often, then the back door often becomes an option. You get to say, yeah, it doesn't work out for me, I'm going to leave. So that was kind of my attitude being in the company. I didn't really have a stake in it. I didn't really feel like, you know, that this was something that I could take ownership of. Then on February, not February, uh, July, <laughs> July 16th, 2017, I remember the date specifically because there was kind of in this moment where I had this flip moment. You could say it was like kind of an experience with God. And that's a, that's a different story for another day. But something changed in me that day. I, long story short, I got to see a perspective, like a small glimpse, a small taste of what, of what God wanted to do with media for the world. You know, I, I, one of my biggest, you know, one of my, the people I really looked up to in this movement was Hyojinen. Hyojinim was someone I always looked up to. I always related myself to him, someone who felt like an outcast, who probably had a lot of, you know, temper, who also felt like he, you know, he's also the eldest son in his family, hence me too. And I always felt like I had something to prove. And I think in this situation, it was kind of no different too. I, I wanted to be part of something. I, as the eldest son, I think I wanted to take ownership of something, but I never could. So then, I don't know, there, something, some switch flipped in me when I decided, wait, I can take ownership of my situation here. I can take ownership of, even though this is not my, I didn't create this product, I didn't create this project, I didn't, you know, I'm not the founder of this company. What, what, what I can do is be able to give something, you know, extra. And at that moment, I started to realize I became the most hardworking version of myself. Again, this is kind of just brushing through some of the specifics, but I became the most hardworking version of myself. I poured my heart and soul into this, and I even told myself, I am going to give my life to do this work for the rest of my life. And it's a statement that I've never, I always criticize people say, you can't do that, that's like it's being blind to something. But no, it's for the first time I really felt genuinely that I could give my life doing something that I feel is so impactful. And what's crazy, it was the first time in my life when I had, two, you know, one feet over the line, one feet over, I decided to finally plant two feet in one direction. And it's an incredible feeling. I'll t uh, you know, brothers and sisters, I, let me tell you, when you finally decide to make that commitment where you, find, when you, when you decide to focus on a specific direction, what's crazy is you close any back door that you have, right? You close any, you know, and you only, you're now, your entire intention is focused on what's in front of you. No longer is, oh, can I exit? But more like, how am I going to accomplish what's in front of you? You know? And it was an uphill battle. Like, not, I'm not saying that everything became sunshine and rainbows after that. It was a tough battle. Like, we, I, there was a time where we had to hit a deadline because we, we have expos. We have, you know, uh, we have a specific deadline between the year of when to release the game for our marketing purpose. And sometimes I would sleep four hours a day for an entire week, too. And I asked myself, wait, hey, dang, okay, this is, is this the life I'm going to live? But with this newfound commitment, I, was, I really, really felt there's a lot of value to have. And after, so, so three months, a uh, few months after the July 16, 2017, we finally released our game. We finally released it. We reached the finish line. And I very, very well remember our whole team was gathered around one computer. And then we, you know, we, there was like this one button, like the publish button. And we were all like, you know, anticipating. We clicked it and we were so excited, you know, that we finally reached the milestone that we finished the game. It took five years in development. <laughs> yeah, so um, I guess the, the next thing, I guess the one I wanted to share is just some of the, af the aftermath of everything. So... Initially, our game didn't really do too well. We, we didn't really sell so many copies. We, you know, we kind of butchered our entire business, our business plan, because we, frankly, we were just inexperienced businessmen. We were great artists, 
you know, we were great developers, but we didn't know how to run a business. And making a, you know, creating a video game, you need to know about marketing, you need to know about how to sell your game properly. But yeah, so that's the long story short, five years later, this is what I'm able to share about our game. We have a, so on here, we have a, a, a lot of people played our games. We have sold over, I th don't quote me on this, but I think over 60,000 copies of our game has been sold. Um, we have fan art from some of our characters that we have in our game. These are just some of the art that people created. Um, this, is, <laughs> this is, I think, one of the characters that uh, a lot of people seem to like for some reason. Uh, this is, uh, you know, two rivals. In also two characters in our game, and we even had someone who did a cosplay of one of our characters. That's a, that's a, one of the ghost characters that you can see, and she dressed up as the ghost from our characters, and it was so exciting. It was, I, you know, and not just, <laughs> not just that too, but we had amazing reviews from, um, um, from many people. Um, I think if you Google us on the Pain Screen Killings on Google, you'll see the word 9 out of 10 Steam, and, uh, you know, GOG and Humble Bundle also rated us pretty high. Um, um, so, why am I sharing this? Why am I sharing about our accolades? I think what I didn't realize back then, you know, when I first started making the video games, was I didn't, you know, when I first started the development, was I didn't know the type of impact that we could have for many people. Um, you, know, you know, despite we only sell a certain amount of copies, we definitely have more eyes on our games. People loved our content. And as I said before, I'm not anyone special. I think I, you know, I'm, I'm someone who'd even graduate high school properly. I didn't, um, I didn't, I didn't, you know, get the best grades in school. I'm not a straight A student. I, I was close to failing. I was really close to failing. And, but we had the ability to impact people. So this is us at, at one of the expos. Like one of my favorite things is actually being able to interact with real fans. People came up to us and say, hey, I played your game. And some people even have questions, like, well, so what's up with this character, you know? It was, it was crazy to see that how much impact that we had on people. And this, and this is not something that I, you know, that I can, a victory that I can just claim for myself. This was the hard work and effort of our team for an entire, you know, period of time. And what I'm, I think more, more proud than I am of, of making a, 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 you know, a commercial product, I am very, very proud of all the relationships and the, the unity that our team had. You know, there were times where we were in the red, where we had no money, yet our team still stayed and wanted to, with this vision in mind of we wanted to impact the world, we, we, we trudged through any of the, a lot of the difficulties that we had. You know, we didn't always get along with each other. Some, you know, we lived and worked in the same place initially before we had an office. So there was friction in that. There, you know, there was you know, our living conditions. Sometimes, uh, you know, uh, if, uh, <laughs> if, you know, I, there were times where, like, I was close to leaving because of my teammates. I'm like, I can't work with these guys. But it's through this unity of really, you know, of going through thick and thin, that we're able to stand here in front of our, you know, in front of this uh, kind of like a world stage and present to the people and show our hard work, blood, sweat, and tears. And I, you know, I think for me, the greatest joy for me is being able to see people really fall in love with what we've created. So I think one of the things that, so one of the things that I realized that helped me was being able to give, like, plant a seed in me, you know, through either whether if it's classes or whether if it's, like, me being able to interact with people. So we want, I, I think our team wants to give that opportunity to people. So, uh, yeah, I'm excited to announce that we're going to, I think, uh, starting December, we're going to have a game dev club for any young people or even anybody who wants to come and join. I think you're going to make it high school and above. But we want to give the opportunity for people to have a chance to, uh, interact with anything related to game development, ask us questions, get to know, so we, you guys can get a head start in. So we really believe that there is, um, the media has the impact to change this world. So the last thing I think I want to uh, leave you guys with is, you know, oftentimes, and this is kind of just my reflection from being part of the team for this long time, oftentimes, you don't really know, you can't really see the fruits of what you've been working on. 
you know. I, you know, ask me five years ago, you know, um, where I'll be, you know. Will our game even sell? Like, I didn't even know about that. Um, or do you, are you able to make a living off this? I wouldn't even know that, you know. Um, what do you want to do in the future? I, even then, I didn't even know what I wanted to do. And I, <laughs> I think, yeah, for me, it was really putting trust and faith in God and in this, in this feeling that he instilled in me. Again, I can't, exp I can't explain to you why I believe that this is so important. I can't explain to you why I feel so called, you know, to want to do this work, to be part of, this, you know, of the gaming industry or even just to share about media in general. But I, I really trust that God has something really amazing planned for the future. And he used that, you know. He used that with all of us. I think I can speak for a lot of the people on my team that we, we believe in this. We, we do have, we have this vision that we want to create something amazing. We want to be able to impact the world. And we want to also share about our values. We want to be able to give, you know, a piece of God to our audience. Or we want to be able to impact someone, change someone's life. So, yeah. So, I think the last thing I have to show for you guys is just a, a uh, small demo uh, walkthrough of our next project. So our next project is a little bit about it. It's called Scene Investigators. It is a cr crime deduction mystery game um, and where you as a player kind of have to figure out everything, and everything is up to interpretation as you as a player. So let's check it out. Hi, everyone. My name is Yoshi, and I am the lead level designer for EQ Studios. Today, I want to showcase the demo for our newest game, Scene Investigators, which is a crime investigation game that will challenge you to reveal the tragedies and secrets in every scene. Do you have what it takes to solve them all? Let's begin. For this demo, your goal is to answer the five questions provided to you on this laptop. Questions one and three are more or less simple and can be answered properly with keen observation. Questions four and five, however, are a little more open to interpretation. You will need to understand the characters, their relationships and their motives to make an accurate deduction. Don't leave anything unturned because it just might be a crucial piece of evidence to reveal the untold narrative of this case. A quick glance and we can see that the scene is set up as a dinner gathering at what seems to possibly be a birthday party. Right away we notice that the person at the head of the table seems to be the one that had died. As we take a closer look, we can see that the table here was set up for five people, and it seems that one didn't show up. An even closer look, and you might notice that one person is left-handed, as the fork is on the right side of the table. And the person across did not drink any wine, but had orange juice instead. I think it's time now to start combing the scene. Let's check out that drawer over there. Here we have an open envelope address to a Clara Gibson from a Heather Brown. Not sure how this is helpful. Let's head to the kitchen. Maybe there's something over there. Here is a note left on the fridge. Seems like someone went shopping. This could be important. Ah, now here's something that gives us quite a bit of info. This is the guest list for the gathering. Seems there are th only three names. So who are the other two people? Hmm, what's this? Oh, this is a wallet and it belongs to a uh, Henry Gibson. And now here's something. The address on the ID is the exact same one on the envelope. And Henry also shares the same last name as Clara. Could they be a husband and wife? Business cards for a lawyer. And a card for an abortion clinic? Hmm. Okay, let's take a look in here. 
What do we have here? A guide to a few restaurants in town. Bar Refine, Bill's Backyard Burgers, Bonfire, Crane Lane. This doesn't seem too useful. Oh, what's that over there? Hmm, now this is interesting. Here we have a receipt dated for February 14th at the Fantasy Amour. Huh, Valentine's Day. Did Henry and Clara go on a dinner date? Maybe they have it written down on their calendar. Let's go check it out. Huh? Clara was out of town for that week? Something doesn't add up. Who did Henry go to dinner with? As you see, the game requires careful observation of the information and items in the scene. All these are clues and potential pieces of the bigger picture, and it's your challenge as the investigator to decide which ones are important and how they fit together. If you think you got what it takes to solve this case, please give it a try. Thanks for watching. Yeah, so uh, yeah, that pretty much concludes my talk for today. If you guys have any questions or you guys would like to try our demo, we, uh, I'll be out in the back. We'll have a little table there. Um, but yeah, thank you so much, and have a nice week, everyone.